welcome back to the passes live i want to thank you for tuning in tonight we're doing a special video and it's not baseball card related well maybe a little bit but baseball card related toy related and full of nostalgia we're going back to the year 1989 and we're going to take a walk through it through the eyes of a great american sears wish book and i know you guys remember these from your childhoods this was the big thing when we were younger so 1989, we saw a lot of awesome things happen in pop culture. We saw Michael Keaton become Batman. We saw Ghostbusters 2 sequel, the first movie. Um, you know, Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card uh, came onto the scene in 1989. The fall of the Berlin Wall. But we don't want to hear about that. We were kids. We didn't care about that stuff. It didn't even exist. All we cared about was baseball cards, toys, and video games. And that is still what a lot of us really care about. And that is the purpose of this video. So I'm going to try my best to take you back to those years and relive the past through a Sears Great American Witch book. Join us. So 30 years ago, 1989, the Sears Witch book, these were the big thing when you were a kid. Getting your hands on one of these was just pure excitement to fill out the order form and circle things and everything else for your parents to order for Christmas for you. And these were three dollars back in 89 on the cover here we have a picture of the average american family of the mother the father the two kids the newborn and the dog all celebrating the holidays the first look at the inside here at the table of contents um the difference of all the things that were offered in these books you have, you have video games you have toys electronics appliances these had everything and these were around for a very long time there was no Amazon, no eBay, nothing online. This is how you ordered your things for Christmas and whatever you wanted for your birthday, anything that might be. You circled it, you gave it to your parents. They filled out the order form and then you waited until the holiday. There was no two day Amazon Prime shipping, jewelry, clothing. We're going to skip ahead though. We have a lot of, uh, most of the, the beginning of these magazines. Um, they have watches here's an MLB watch soccer so some different kinds of sports the Oakland A's the Bengals have some different clocks down here Los Angeles Dodgers and the 49ers and some Nintendo watches as well so a lot of those Batman was really big in 89 like I said before Michael Keaton um, debuted as Batman well after Adam West and even Pee Wee Herman was hot back then Kiwi Herman watch. So you had all different kinds of styles, and this was uh, pretty common back then as far as styles and fashion goes, things of that nature. All the crazy colors, neon colors, and everything else. And then we have some kind of like, um, as seen on TV, different trinkets and gifts and whatnot that um, seem far outdated now, but back then they, these were the hot items a car sweeper, um, coin sorter, stuff like that. Now that you're like, well, those are antiques. Who even uses those anymore? Some more things along those lines there. So some different kind of plaques, coffee mugs, dartboard, things of that nature. And we're skipping ahead more so to toys, games, baseball cards. We have a lot of clothing in here. Um, we could check out some clothing styles then for you younger guys that don't remember the 90s or well, I shouldn't say don't remember but weren't around for them or for the 80s and 90s the clothing styles are kind of far out compared to what they are now I think a lot of the stuff made a com comeback as of somewhat recently the last few years Chicago Bulls it's a big thing back then. The Cubs, Notre Dame stuff, some more Bulls attire in the Lakers, sweatsuits and whatnot. Some tuxedos for kids and other things along those lines. But this is how most of the kids dressed in the 80s. Denim on denim and neon colors and Bugle Boy and everything else. And uh, I was no exception. 
Here's some more kids' clothes. TMNT was big back then. TM TMNT premiered in 88, so um, it was around for a little bit when this magazine came out, but it was a hot thing. Everyone wanted TMNT stuff, the toys and everything else. Skateboarding was taken off then. Skip ahead some more here. Starting to get into some other stuff here. Um, definitely always loved stuff like this when I was a kid. I'm sure you guys did too. I really liked the uh, realistic toy sets like that. Kitchen on Wheels. I definitely did not have that one, but I had something comparable to it. I did have this. I was actually going to buy this recently um, on eBay. You can get it for, I don't know, 30 or 40 bucks nowadays. It was um, like a children's checkout register. It was awesome. Pushed buttons and they beeped. And uh, I really loved this thing. You would uh, hold things across it and it would beep. Like it was a scanner and uh, had a microphone and everything else. You had the basket with it, some fruit. I used to love that. I definitely used to use it for baseball cards too. It was like 88 or 89 when Eric and I started collecting. And I had a card shop run out of my room called Johnny's Card Shop that existed until probably the early 2000s, I'd say. I was super into it. I dedicated so much of my time to um, upkeeping my card shop. Loved it. I would. Uh, I started out only selling doubles and stuff like that and really only sold the neighborhood kids or if Eric ever bought anything off me, it was more so me buying off him. But definitely used to use that, run cards across it to scan it. Thought it was really cool. Johnny's Card Shop. Another piece that I had when I was young. You guys might remember this. Uh, Little People's School. I want to say Eric just bought this recently at an antique mall for his kids for like four bucks or something like that. But that was something I played with all the time when I was younger as well. All the little people stuff. Fisher Price. 1989 when this when this came out I was probably just turned five years old. I was either four or five. Uh, I'm not sure what month this was released. Usually it came out a few months before Christmas time. And another item that I had. Um, the Disney Magic Kingdom. Used to play with that all the time. Only 20 bucks back then. See things like that nowadays and they're uh, easily double or triple that price. But I'm sure you guys can relate to the Fisher Price stuff. We have early typewriters uh, for kids and some more toys along those lines. Tonga trucks. Um, now you can fetch some money for those. If you can find those in good condition or you have some of your own in storage, you can check them out online, see what they're worth because I mean something like this nowadays in good condition, you can probably get 75 bucks for it. It was older die cast metal trucks. See them every once in a while, but they're all rusty. I think I still have some of mine from my original childhood. You get some little tykes, play sets here and whatnot, tables and things of that nature. And we get into sleeping bags here. Um, so we see some more hot colors from the 80s and just crazy designs, video movies. This is, uh, I thought that was kind of barnyard commandos for a second there. And some more sleeping bags. Police Academy, the cartoon. I was definitely into that toy line. Kenner made it and had a bunch of those. Haven't started collecting those again yet, but uh, have thought about it. They're not too expensive. We have a, a skeleton crew, a skateboarding sleeping bag here. It's pretty awesome. I can relate to that now. I like that a lot. Super Mario was hot back then. The California Raisins were definitely a huge thing as well. And Peter Pan, Winnie the Pooh, Hot Wheels, and a few others. And getting into tents now. I always wanted something like this when I was younger. Um, I think my parents just thought it was a waste of money, so I never actually had one. So I would go about making tents and forts and everything else out of like chairs from the dining room table. I'd take blankets and throw them over top. And I feel like I was always building forts. I used to love doing that and sitting there and playing with toys or whatever else. Mickey's Great Outdoors, Garfield. I was a huge Garfield and Friends fan when I was younger. I used to watch the show every single day. Had a long run. They made a lot of episodes. Used to love it. Uh, Eric used to watch it with me as well, too. When we were younger. And DuckTales, of course, too. DuckTales was another big one that I really liked. And something that I really like now that I wish I can get my hands on. Real Ghostbusters. My favorite cartoon of all time. You have the tent, which I have seen a few times recently in the last couple of years. And pretty expensive for that. I think it usually goes for around 150 bucks, 200 bucks, Maybe a little bit even more if it's sealed, brand new in the package, and also the sleeping bag, which is a little more common. 
Um, hard to find in uh, new condition though, but generally in used condition, it's about 40, 40 bucks for the sleeping bag and also the tote bag around 60 bucks or so for that. Don't have any of them. Want to track them down eventually and get those from my personal collection and also TMNT, same exact things, tents, duffel bag, My Little Pony, never really got into My Little Pony. Uh, that was too, too much for girls, so I didn't care for it. Mickey and Minnie and Mickey's Express. And then uh, we get into some boring stuff. When you're kids, you don't want to look at that stuff. Race car bed for you grandma boys or grandma's boy fans out there. Love that movie. And also Pee-wee's chair too. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I like to have that in my house now. Sherry. I was a big Pee-wee Hearn fan whenever I was younger. Till all those uh, things came out about him. I'm pretty sure I wasn't allowed to watch it anymore. Alfie, of course, used to love Alfie. I'm not sure if that was the same one I had or not, but Alfie was sick. Still see those sometimes at antique malls and flea markets. And uh, I always think about buying one. It was 25 bucks back then for Alfie. So some more kids' toys, electronics, Socrates, some other handheld um, educational games, which back then I didn't really care for at all. We have some comics here, G.I. Joe and Alf and Iron Man and a few others, and some other kids' books. Babysitter's Club, never really cared for that. And of course, I used to love this page when I was younger. I always wanted a gumball machine in my room and just thought it was so sick. Never had one. Maybe someday I will have one, but I don't chew gum ever. Couldn't tell you the last time I actually chewed gum. So I'd like to get a baseball card vending machine in my house. Eric and I were talking about that recently. You can still find them sometimes, they're pretty cheap. Here are the Legos. Was never really huge into Legos when I was younger. Eric was much more into Legos than I was. Play with them a little bit, but uh, was always more of an action figure fan. And here's some like scientific things here, junior science crystal growing kits, and other crafts and whatnot. Definitely had this whenever I was younger. Um, Forty-four piece kids tool set. My dad definitely bought that for me. Maybe it was actually eighty-nine. I might have even asked for it, but my dad's a master woodworker, has been for a long time. So I think he always wanted me to kind of carry on with uh, his legacy there and I never really got into it still not into it at all and it looks like we have something baseball related here on number 14 for the true baseball collector here's a 60 page album with a set of 81 official postage stamps of major league players each with a protective mount never seen those um, 30 bucks for the whole set kind of cool and we get into the baseball cards now I recognize these. I don't know if I ever had those when I was a kid or not. Maybe you guys did. Those were the baseball superstars, like cardboard plaques. Eric and I still come across them sometimes. Um, really no value to them at all whatsoever. There's a lot of, well you see them now, there's a lot of junky players in there and they're really panned out, but back then they were superstars. And not really bad buy for each one of these individual sets. Only 20 bucks. And then you have the 89 tops. Um, baseball embossed set here for 30 bucks don't remember seeing these ever either 12 players interesting now I, this is something i definitely recognize and i've talked about before in the past number six the official mlb card collector's case only 10 bucks back then now at the time this was pretty cool you could carry your cards around with you easily and conveniently and um they all had little ridges in them so you could only probably fit I don't know 20 or 30 cards into each individual um, segment there but what you didn't realize as a kid or didn't really care is that this thing was really dangerous for your cards like when you close that case your cards would get bounced all around off the top of the lid corners would get scuffed up rounded off and this is also 1989 we're talking about too so 1989 Bowman was out at the time so you put Bowman cards in there they're getting bent you know like you know, one fourth of the cards getting bent, the whole top of the player's head's getting bent. So a lot of my cards got destroyed from carrying them around in this thing. I don't think Eric ever had one of those. He may have had one, but probably took better care of it. I mean, he definitely took better care of his cards than I did. And there's the legendary sports talk player there for 25 bucks. You might have seen Eric's video about that. I feel like he usually buys that when he sees it. It's very nostalgic for him. I never had one, but, um, I definitely used his before in the past when we were younger and sometimes sit around and listen to them with him early on. 
And looks like we have some 87 tops here, number 10. Uh, card collector set including 64 cards, 10 clear plastic top load protector pages, which I've never heard them call that before. 20 bucks. Um, see some 86 tops, some 83 tops on here. And a package of 24 collector pages, 7 bucks. It sounds kind of like a ripoff nowadays. And these action shot cards. And of course, we have 1989 tops complete set. For 29 bucks, so not too bad at all for 792 cards. And um, I'm not sure what the hottest card was back then. I, I guess it was probably Greg Jeffries was the hot rookie card in there. Um, I think the book value on that only ever got up to about 250 back then because I remember having that card. And for some reason, my card was all creased up. I'm not sure if something happened to it and I got pissed off and just did it myself, or if Eric and I did it somehow, what happened? But it was a hot card and I ruined it. That's all that I remember, and I had to live with that for a long time, and now it's not worth anything. But Greg Jeffries, Future Stars card. That was a hot card in that set back then. And number 15, uh, the 88 Tops traded set here for 15 bucks. Um, some good cards in there. Tina Martinez, USA Olympic card. Uh, Biggio, Roberto Alomar, rookie card. And um, Jim Abbott and some other ones as well. And there's a value pack here. Baseball card value pack. All different, all in mint condition. 250 cards included. Uh, stars, superstars, old cards, new cards. Packed in a cardboard baseball storage box. So it looks like a 300 count box. It's full of more than likely commons. The old school Fairfield boxes. And then you have the typical baseball, football address list book for TTM. And here we're starting to get into some board games, I believe. So we have some more, uh, we have some experiment sets here and telescope. And here's some junior musical instruments. For any of you musicians when you're younger, you might recognize some of those. I never had any of that stuff though. Um, kind of played the piano a little bit when I was younger. My dad showed me, but never really caught on. Keyboards, I know Eric had one of these styles that he would play a decent amount when we were younger. I, I had one too, but um, maybe it was this one. It was it was a smaller one, but I never really played it. Like I said, never really caught on to that. Um, this is something I definitely had at one point, the Fisher-Price cassette player. Can't remember whatever happened to that. And some walkie-talkies. Definitely had these ones when we were younger. Eric and I used to play with those. Sky Talkers, 29 bucks. And of course, the Viewmaster. I love Viewmaster. Really liked those when I was a kid. This is the um, the Disney um, theater Viewmaster. They used to make Batman animated series, Ghostbusters, all the popular all popular pop culture um, cartoons and everything else were on Viewmaster. So pretty awesome. And the next page is really sick too. See right away the RGB, aka Real Ghostbusters. Pinball machine, which I still currently have, but mine is not working. There's some sort of like electrical issue, uh, which sucks. I think I paid 40 bucks for it. They usually sell for about $200 now if you come across these. Um, if they're working, even new in the box, you might even get more for them. So keep an eye out for those if you see them. I want to get one or get mine running again so I can actually play it. And Super Mario, we have some actual stand up ones that are probably three feet tall here. And a kid's pool table on the next page. And some other different uh, games here, air hockey, ping pong, foosball. And some more on here, turtle shooting gallery, that's pretty awesome. Eric definitely had this, ski ball. He used to play that all the time. We actually saw that in Ohio like two weeks ago at an antique mall for like seven or eight bucks, which is pretty awesome. I almost bought it just because I was like, wow, that is sick, man. It was, I think it was like new in the box too. They usually sell for about 30 bucks now. But uh, it was sixteen dollars back then. This is like probably the number one thing that I can uh, attribute to Eric's going in Eric's room when I was younger. Because you know when you're whenever you're a kid, like going to your older brother's room or sister's room is like I don't know. It's like a big deal whenever you're a kid because they always had like all this cool stuff that you wish you had. And every time I went into his room, I remember seeing that ski ball on his floor or somewhere in his room. It was like that's sick. So I almost bought it for him, but. I know he remembers it though, it's pretty sick. NBA basketball and a dartboard. And we're getting into some board games here. Gone Fishing, 
In the Dark Operation. I used to love that game. I used to play that uh, a decent amount. My mom always liked that game. Tic Tac Toss. Hot Potato. I don't really remember any of these other ones, though. I definitely remember Kerplunk. We were playing that. That was a fun one. And even more board games. Shark Attack. Domino Rally. The Legendary Crossfire. Dynamite. Oh, I used to love Dynamite. I forgot all about that game. That game was sick. That really brings me back seeing that. We used to play that all the time. I really miss that game. I'm going to have to track that down and uh, maybe make a video about playing it or something. That game was awesome. Hungry Hungry Hippos, of course. Legendary game. Spider Wars. I think I had that one, but I don't remember it that well. It just looks kind of familiar. Dizzy Dizzy Dinosaur Rings a Bell. And Double Dare, of course. Never played the game, I don't think, but used to love the TV show. And, of course, Mousetrap is another awesome one. Snake Dance is another one I don't think I really ever played when I was younger. And here we have some more, like, novelty uh, board games here, like Sweet Valley High. And um, there's a Donald Trump board game, which I never knew existed. Clue Jr., Monopoly. And it looks like we're getting into some uh, more portable games here, like Battleship, Electronic Battleship, and... Uh, some other ones, and here is the awesome Tiger handheld games for the most part. Used to have this game, Head to Head Baseball. Used to love that game. I, I would play it all the time. I was actually just thinking about this recently, and how I should buy um, a new version of that, or not a new version, but uh, a new old stock version off eBay. See what they're going for, and maybe pick one up. And we have some the Tiger handheld games here, of course, Contra, Top Gun. Double Dragon Gauntlet, Simon's Quest, Karate King. I don't remember Karate King. Jordan vs. Bird. Never played that one before. And we also have a head to head talking football. Some of you guys might remember that one. Never played that one. I was never a big football fan when I was younger. And of course, Legendary Game Boy. 90 bucks back then. And we have a baseball game which is titled Baseball. Super Mario Land, Alleyway, and Tennis. And then we have Advertising for Nintendo here. 150 bucks. With a standard console there. And here comes the games. Airwolf. A lot of these I don't remember. Bases Loaded was a huge one. Eric and I used to play that all the time. Bad Dude. Castlevania. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Probably the worst game of all time. When you have some free time, definitely check out AVGN on YouTube and his Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde episode. It's hilarious. DuckTales, the only game that I could beat as a kid was DuckTales. So that has some nostalgic value to me there. Blades of Steel was an awesome one too. I just remember being, uh, the music was so rad back then for Blades of Steel. Like, this game was sick. Was never even into hockey, but just like had to play that game because of how hyped I'd get like just playing it and listening to the music. Friday the 13th, the Excite Bike. Karate Kid, of course. Simon's Quest, Skate or Die. Yeah, I, could, I just couldn't play video games when I was a little kid. I sucked at them, so I'd get discouraged. Still, like, I liked watching Eric play them, so that was, like, my my phone would be sitting there watching Eric play, like, Zelda 2 or whatever in its entirety. I loved it. Maybe I'd even sit there and look through baseball cards and stuff, like, while he was playing it. Because I sucked at it. I just couldn't do it. I was four or five years old. He was eight or nine at the time. Major League Baseball. There's Zelda 2. Speaking of that, Adventure Link. Super Mario Bros. 2 was out then. And here we go. The introduction of Sega Genesis. The dawn of 16-bit power. And we had a Sega, but I don't think it was until a few years later uh, when we got one of those. And my video game um, talent got a little bit better. Or ability, I should say. Got a little better and I could beat actual beat games. Or more games myself without trying to use cheat codes or anything else. But not a whole lot of not notable games on here for Sega. Rampage, of course, used to love that one, but we used to play for Nintendo. And here's another hilarious one, too. This is Ghostbusters for Sega, which they originally made for Nintendo. From the hit movie, scare up some fun, capturing the or capturing weird ghosts, eluding the Marshmallow Man, and defeating the all-powerful Gorza. So instead of writing the actual correct name... Of the main antagonist of Ghostbusters 1, Gozer, they put Gorza. 
So I don't think that's really a spelling error because in the game, it's wrong too. Gorza. Pretty hilarious there. Reggie Jackson Baseball, California Games. Another one I recognize here. The Olympic Summer Games, Winter Games, Food Fight. I don't remember that game at all. It looks really terrible though. Dig Dug uh, was one we liked. I think we had Dig Dug 2 for Nintendo. We used to play that all the time. I would always get frustrated on two-player mode playing Eric. So it's the Atari systems here. Never had Atari. And we get into remote control cars. Pocket Lobo and Lobo 4. And here's some more stylish ones there. Definitely remember seeing this guy. Never had him though. It's Tully Rad Skate. Remote, remote controlled uh, skateboarder apparently. And some other ones. Never got two into remote control cars. I think I had one and I busted it early on. So I just had no interest in them after that. And some other different things. Some rockets and whatnot. And some like caterpillar uh, toys there. Here's some racetracks. I used to have one of these too and I think I lost a lot of the parts to it so I just didn't play it anymore. A lot of people like these though. I think I actually might have had that one. Can't remember. And the trains. Still a lot of train fans out there. Personally never got into it myself. More train setups. I always liked the actual uh, play sets though. So I thought those were always really cool. The miniature things was always real into those. And here we go. Exactly what I was looking for. The TMNT page, or the Turtles in general, and action figures have arrived here with the original Party Wagon, which was only 24 bucks back then for the Party Wagon in 1989. You can find that new in box now. You're probably paying four or 500 bucks for it, brand new. Pizza Thrower, some of the Turtles there, and the Blimp, which they remade all this stuff for newer Turtles toy lines, which I don't care for any of it. They have square heads, and they, I think they just look ridiculous. A stock splinter, Donatello, and the different uh, turtle variants there. The action turtles, rock and roll, Michelangelo, and break fighting Raphael. And uh, Genghis Frog there on his fan powered skateboard. And um, Baxter Stockman, Rocksteady, and Krang. Used to have a lot of turtles when I was younger. And the real Ghostbusters page. Love this so much. Um, there is the legendary Proton Pack there uh, with the PKA meter. I used to love this thing. We used to play with it all the time. I do have it again now in the box. And, of course, the Ghost Trap. Never had that when I was younger. I have it now, though. Um, all this stuff is very, very valuable if you find it, especially new in box. Items that are loose, uh, things like this that are loose aren't really worth too much. Ghost Popper. No, not the Ghost Popper. The, um, there's the... the Ecto Popper, I mean, and the Ecto Goggles, those came as a set together. And the Neutrona Blaster, never had that when I was a kid. And we have some different action figure lines. Uh, these are different variants of the Ghostbusters. The Monsters uh, Collection, which I never got into those at all. Never liked them. Highway Haunter, still need to pick that one up for my PC, don't have it yet. And of course, the Ecto one, the original one, I have a few of them loose, but I don't have it in the box. But my favorite toy line ever, Real Ghostbusters. Not these particular ones, the earlier ones from 86 and a few years after that were more my cup of tea and still are for the most part. Next page, we're moving to Robocop, which is big back then. So some Robocop figures, which are made by Kenner. Different vehicles there. And then also um, He-Man, which He-Man uh, had a re-release there. These were different, uh, different line from the original ones. I always liked He-Man when it first, uh, kind of when the first few years it came out. I was a He-Man fan. We go to G.I. Joe here now. So some different G.I. Joe vehicles, a play set, and also some different figures. Not the first run of those, though. And then Micro Machines. I used to love Micro Machines. I haven't started collecting them again um, now, but maybe someday. Definitely had this play set. Fill it up with the gas can mountain service. This fold up into a gas can. I used to like that a lot. I actually just saw this one, the Car Wash City. Saw that one at the uh, antique mall over the weekend. Actually, I think it was like four bucks, but it was. It looked like it was missing a lot of stuff. All the pieces were just like literally shoved into the box, and um, I almost bought it just for the box alone and display, but I ended up going against it. But uh, definitely had this too as well. The Central Station that had uh, batteries. I believe it would light up, so it was pretty cool. 
and all these playsets were awesome, but very easy to lose if you're a kid. Even if you're an adult, they're easy to lose as of how tiny they were. But some more micro machines there, different uh, ships, planes, and whatnot. Had this one as well. Used to like that one a lot too. Um, it was actually a battery that uh, folded out into an airport, so that was kind of cool. Forgot all about that one actually. To dig that out. And we go into some matchbox things here. We have some micro transformers, if you guys remember those. And uh, some different planes and vehicles and whatnot. Transformers was still pretty hot in 1989. And some more Hot Wheels things. Actually, this is the first page of Hot Wheels stuff. There's a lot of Hot Wheels fans and collectors out there. I had some of the stuff, but not a lot of it. I think I was more so into micro machines at that time frame. But this looks pretty awesome. The, the modern multi-parking gas. That beauty looks like a fun toy. And also this one as well. The car wash. Would have had a lot of fun with that back then. And then we moved past that stuff into other different uh, activities for kids. Sporting things. Basketball hoops. Baseball nets. Michael Jordan was really uh, crazed back then as well. Anything we missed on here? Um, some Nerf, different Nerf things there. It's a good way to get you to pick up your clothes and socks and stuff when you're a kid. Good idea to have invented that. Some old football helmets and jerseys and stuff. And, pretty awesome, old school skateboards, Veriflex boards, Speed Freak, some other ones. I used to have a Nash. My first skateboard ever was a Nash. Nightmare on Elm Street board, it was pretty sweet. And, um, some other kid stuff here. Some mobiles and sleds and whatnot. And roller skates, something that you never see nowadays. G.I. Joe tents and actually a whole camping set. That's pretty awesome for you G.I. Joe fans out there. I was a huge fan uh, midway through the 80s of G.I. Joe. Never got back into collecting in the toys though. Maybe someday. They're all very, very expensive now. And play sets. Eric and I definitely had this one in our backyard, but I think it was green. This looks really familiar though, but... Um, I love the old 80s photography. It's so awesome. Everything's not all bright and high def and everything else. It's a doll. And um, I just love the contrast of old photography from the 80s and 90s for the most part. I just really like it. I know what it is, but uh, it really takes me back. Some different play sets here. We're going into more of the toddler stuff. I think we're coming up on Power Wheels. Power Wheels is a huge deal, too. Uh, if any of you guys had those when you're younger, I always wanted one, never got one though. Uh, these aren't it yet. These are the pedal ones. And we get into the Power Wheels here. So these are pretty sick for any of you kids that were around back then. These were all the craze. I think you'd probably go like 10 miles per hour, if that. I don't even know if, you, if they go up to that speed. Um, and the weight limit was like 50, 60 pounds. But these are sweet though, always one on one, but kind of grew up on like a busy, off the side of a busy road. So I get it, I get it when my parents didn't get me one, they didn't want me getting crushed by a car. But I did have a real Ghostbusters power cycle, which I'm trying to track down again. Very rare, there's one on eBay right now for $3,000. Um, it's from 1988. I want to track that down, had that thing, love it. Don't want to pay three grand for it though, it's not worth it to me. And exercise equipment and sporting goods. Um, guns. There's this magazine. So these magazines literally had everything in them. Pool tables. As you can see now, poker machines. Everything was in here. Toy index. Um, so had an entire set of pages for toys alone. And your parents would write on here, write down what you circled. They'd send the order form in or call over the phone. And then you would wait to get your stuff. There's still a lot more left in here, too. Going to electronics. We'll skip through this kind of fast. We have cookware in here and different appliances, which I don't think any of us are really too interested in. Corded phones, which are quickly becoming a thing of the past, pretty much our thing of the past. I, I don't think I really have too much of a problem trading in my... Uh, cell phone for a corded phone though. I think I'd rather have a corded phone obviously. That's just my thought on it. 
tools and computers. Love seeing these old computers too. Huge calculators. Back when you had to carry around all kinds of different stuff to get one job done. Now your phone does everything. Old computers, old printers, you need to tear the paper off on the sides. <laughs> Advances in technology over the last 30 years are crazy. And we have computer games here. So we have anything uh, anything decent here. RoboCop computer game, Bad Dudes. Remember the NES game, Bad Dudes. And um, was that Skate Rock? And also Sporting News Baseball. So that was a game back then. And uh, what is this one? Earl Weaver baseball. I definitely remember that. Not, not sure if we ever had it or not. Computer desks. Getting some guitars and keyboards and some TVs back then. Thirty four hundred dollars for that TV. Crazy how far TVs have come. Nine hundred bucks. All the uh, box TVs with the wood. The uh, wood enclosure there it was a big uh, craze back then. 89 VHS tapes, of course. 15 to 20 bucks for most of those. Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Temple of Doom. 1989 was also the year The Last Crusade came out. Which, uh, it was one of my favorite Indiana Jones movies. I loved that movie. Before the long hiatus. And they decided to return to the screen again. In um, King of the Crystal Skull. Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, so a lot of VHS tapes here, and some kids ones, kids ones as well, and some also some sporty ones too. VCR Baseball, it's kind of generic, and Baseball Funnies, the unofficial baseball handbook. And of course VCRs, and we ended off with camcorders. So before cell phones, you had to carry this around if you wanted to film something going on, anything at all. If this is 1989 right now, I'd be filming this video on a Sony Handycam or something of that nature and not my phone. But that ends it out for 1989. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that uh, I helped you to reflect on the past and maybe brought back some good memories. I know um, it definitely did for me. So thank you again for checking that out. And I will see you guys all next time.